Good morning and welcome to our morning prayers here at St Peter's Church in Ipsley. Let us pray. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our readings today are Psalm 66 and 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 12. Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome deeds for man, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The theme of this psalm is that God answers prayer. Individually, and as a body of believers, we should praise and worship God. The psalmist understood that God was not only God over Israel, but the whole world. Therefore, it was good and fitting for him to call everyone to joyfully praise God. Song is not the only way to praise God, but it is one of the chief ways. The psalmist encouraged all to sing at the honour of his name and to do it in a way that made God's praise glorious. Giving praise means we focus on the person, deity or thing being praised, whereas giving thanks may just focus on what we have received and therefore self becomes the primary subject. The psalmist gives practical guidance for those who want to praise God, telling them specifically what to say. 
It does not mean that we will end up praising God in an unfeeling, mechanical way. It means that we need help to truly praise God from the heart. We could begin to praise God by thank thinking upon the greatness of his work in creation, salvation and restoration. Verse 3 says, Say to God, how awesome are your deeds, so great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. This awesome and powerful God has enemies, but through his great power, they will be conquered and brought to submit themselves to God, and he may be praised in recognition of his ultimate triumph over all the earth, and in his worthiness to receive the worship and praises they rightly bring to him. Verse 5 says, Come and see what God has done. Here the psalmist has turned the Holy Scriptures and remembered how God showed his power in bringing Israel through the Red Sea. God saved the Israelites then and he continues to save his people today. The psalmist called all the earth to observe the great works of God and give him praise. Just as fire refines silver in the smelting process, Trials refine our character. God blesses his people, but sometimes the blessing is in a difficult testing. These times of trial and testing bring us a new and deeper wisdom, helping discern truth from falsehood and giving us the discipline to do what we know is right. Many people wonder why we want to praise God, given some of the difficulties we face. But as we continue to put our trust into God, he will deliver us from difficulties. We have to remember that the trials, difficulties, help us to realise that life is a gift from God to be cherished, not a right to be taken for granted. Verse 13 says, I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. The psalmist determined to praise God by obeying his command regarding sacrifices, bringing them to the altar of God. The psalmist has promised God certain sacrifices or gifts in gratitude for God's work when he was in trouble. He would not sin by failing to bring these. We should also be aware that we must keep our promises. God always keeps his and wants us to follow his example. So next time you make a promise, be careful to follow it through Follow through on whatever you have promised to do. Verse 16 says, Come and hear all you who fear God. The vow of the psalmist was not fulfilled through sacrifice alone. He also had an obligation to proclaim God's goodness, to declare what he has done for his soul. No one should think that God could be persuaded merely through sacrifices or vows. It is important to make clear that the psalmist did not only sacrifice with burnt offerings, but was also obedient to God. He did not hold on to sin in his heart, and we must not hold on to ours either. Because we continually do wrong, we too must continually confess our sins. If we don't repent of our sins, we place a wall between us and God. Our attitude should be one of confession and obedience. We often take the privilege of prayer for granted. 
the psalmist understood how wonderful it was that God received his prayer and how it made him realize that God should be praised. And may we also remember how wonderful it is that God receives our prayers. And may we also praise his name, just as the psalmist did. Amen. Our next reading is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 12. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope and the resurrect through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuine genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when christ jesus christ is revealed though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible, inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted that sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What holds you up through the storms of life? We all need an anchor and that anchor is our faith. Where do we find faith strong enough to make it through the storms of life? Peter knows how important faith is and he gives us a great picture of faith. A faith that we can anchor deep within and a faith which will hold us during the storms of life. When Peter wrote this letter, things were changing. Whereas at the beginning of the first century, the government remain, remained unconcerned about this new religious sect. Now, as the church grew, the constrictions of the government increased. Many first century followers of Christ were suffering, being abused and persecuted for believing in and obeying Jesus. Peter is writing to a people who are finding it increasingly difficult to live their faith. Even today, it is not easy being a Christian, but we must find a way to live our faith without compromise. The question is not if we have faith, 
everyone has some kind of faith. Even the atheist has faith in thinking that his rational reasoning and intellectual ability has removed the possibility of God. Others have faith in their own abilities, skills, connections, friends, family and themselves. Everyone has faith. The question is, where is your faith anchored? Sooner or later, the storms of life will begin to blow and the question becomes, will the anchor of faith hold? If your faith is set upon the things of this world, then our faith will perish. Only the kingdom of God has remained constant in the past 2000 years. Our faith is to be set in heaven and not on the things of this world. That is the only way that we know our faith is imperishable. Peter talks about how we love Christ, even though we have not seen him. He heard the word Jesus spoke to Thomas in John chapter 20, verse 29. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we have the definition of faith. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Peter had a faith in Christ that was timeless. His faith was valuable, revealing and full of love. Peter explains that the prophets of the Old Testament put their faith in God when God spoke to them and told them that he was the that the Messiah was coming. He gave them a hope that the one who could deliver them was on the way. It's a message of hope and encouragement. It is a promise. This is the message of the Old Testament prophets. Peter points out that the true faith is not only tied to the prophets, but also the fulfilment of those prophecies. Our faith is built upon Jesus. We believe that he is the Messiah. The embodiment of the Old Testament prophecies. We believe that he died on a cross for our sins and that he rose again. We believe that he is coming back. It is not a question of if you have a faith. Is your anchor of faith a true anchor? Is your faith built upon the truth of scripture? Do you know how valuable, revealing and full of love a faith in Christ is? It is not a question of if the storms of life will come. It is a qu the question, will your anchor of faith hold through the storms? The time to anchor your hope and faith to Christ is now, before the storms show up. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the wonderful work of your hand and the awesome deeds that you have done for us. Thank you that Jesus came to redeem us and to die for us so that we can be raised into newness of life and live with you in the eternal ages to come. How awesome are your works and how great is your power. All the earth will worship you and sing praises to your holy name. For you alone are worthy of honour and thanksgiving, our worship and praise. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for our church. Strengthen John and Martin, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for our clergy here in this parish, Garth, Ian, and all our lay ministers and church wardens. We pray that they would love Jesus with all their heart, soul, and mind. We pray that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide them in all the duties that they are called upon to do. We pray that their teaching and their preaching will be accurate, true, bold, convicting, encouraging, anointed, and Christ-centred. Lord, keep them ever open to you, hear your voice, and give them a heart that seeks to draw ever closer to your heart of love, day by day. We give thanks for the pastoral care they have shown each one of us during the continuing COVID-19 pandemic. We give thanks for the way that they have embraced technology to enable us to join together in worship. We give thanks for everyone who has been willing to assist others during this time. And may we all show the love of God to each other and everyone we meet today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we lift up all those that are in leadership position in our government, both locally and nationally. May they be endowed with wisdom, strength and justice to administer their duties in a manner that is right and pleasing in your eyes. Give them the wisdom to justly administer the law and to carry out their judgments and decisions in the fear of the Lord. May they be wise in their decision making, courageous in their rethinking and creativity. May they lead us with fair representation of the people who elected them. May they lead us with honesty, fair dealing and integrity. May they always consider the children, the marginalised and the weak. We recognise the immense pressure facing the men and women who lead each ministerial area, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, and ask for your guidance, strength, insight and humility and love to be with each one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love, that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. We pray for everyone we know who has lost a loved one or a friend, and we lift their names to you now in the quietness of our hearts. You are close to the brokenhearted. Be with them in their grief and loneliness. Be with them as they face their loss. Ease the hurt in their hearts and encircle them with your love to give them strength to face the day. We ask that they will feel your love surrounding them and upholding them in their sadness. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship, and their lives encircled by
by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those personally known to us, as we lift their names to you now in the quietness of our heart. We remember also those whose names are mentioned in the catch. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray that during the long hours of night, they will turn to you for comfort and support. We pray for the doctors and nurses looking after them, that they will use their gifts of healing to restore them to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please accept the prayers we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I do hope you'll be able to join us again tomorrow. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.